Olivia. We're back here inside Key Arena. Pretty good crowd in the house, but they are not really enjoying what they've seen on the court so far. Their Sonics are down 10 to New Jersey, as we get said, for the second half. Hi again, everybody. Dan Shulman at Hubie Brown with you. And Lawrence Frank has to be happy. Vince Carter is back <laughs> from the ankle injury. Looks spry. Looks good. The big three back together again, which is our Adidas team moment. Well, the big three are doing it. 30 points and 11 assists. Everything is contagious. You see right here a nice hand off the screen. Jason Kidd knocks one down from the corner. Then what you have is a observant long pass. Vince Carter sending it down at the other end. And this is just great team play. Eye contact, Richard Jefferson coming from the baseline. That's why we bring out the fact that three of them are on fire. They're 12 for 20 from the floor. Uh, just look at it. Yes, your kid only has six points, but the assists are there. And then the field goal percentage. Carter having a great night. And then Richard Jefferson doing what he's been doing all year long, coming in at 24 points with great shooting percentages. Every night a learning experience for Kevin Durant. What are the lessons for the first half? Yeah, well, okay, I know I'm one for five, but I'm not getting open. Mainly because this team, New Jersey, doing a great job double treaming every single time we post up, every single time we come off of a screen, New Jersey is there. Double teaming has forced 13 turnovers. That is major at halftime. Carter will again start the second half on the bench as he did the game. Antoine Wright is in the starting line of again of the second half here for the Nets. Jefferson trying to back down Wilkins, leans in and banks it home. A game high 15 for Richard Jefferson. Well, if you're not going to double team, I know that I got a guy that I can shoot over or I give him a nice up and under fake. Looking less and less like the team that struggled through that six-game losing streak. Durant with a driving layup for his second field goal of the night. Now that's the first time that he's been able to truly get to the rim. The other one, he banked it in from about eight feet away. The highest-scoring rookie in the league at 19 points per game, but taking a lot of shots to get those points. Well, he's getting 18 shots a game. And again, Jefferson posting up. They front him, and he gets another easy deuce. Yeah, you can front, Dan. You can front the post guy all you want, but you better jam the passer. That time they fronted the post guy, they did not jam the passer. Wilcox trying to set a screen to free up Durant. Wilcox got shoved to the ground, but the ball had already been kicked. Now, if, you're, if you're watching this game as a coach or an ex-player... You, you, you just admire the beauty and the quickness of the trapping by the Nets. They are not going to allow you to come off the screen without a hard trap. You get down into that painted area, they're going to come with another trap to force you to see if you can make the next extra pass. And you said at halftime, even when they were struggling in that losing streak and not scoring, they still continued to play good defense. Well, they're in the, they're in the top ten, yeah. always. Yeah. All right, field goal for all right, now, you know that this is consistent. This is a, a you say, hey, New Jersey Nets. Well, you slow the game down, they get you in a half-court game, you're going to have to get high percentage shots from your guys, and you better run solid offensive plays to get your three primary shooters open. A team that made the playoffs each of the last six years, and even 41 and 41 a year ago, beat Toronto in the first round, so they got to the Eastern Conference semifinals. And a team, if the big three is healthy with all their support players, there's no reason for them not to make the playoffs again this year. What they need is consistent play at that center position. They need Chris to be able to come back in the second half of the season and give them some points as well as rebounding. And then also, he's a guy that you must pay attention to in the half-court offense. Malik Allen gave him a bit of a lift in the first half. Hit three jumpers, pulled down five rebounds, and on cue, knocks down the turnaround. I like that. I like that. <laughs> You're his man. I'm a step ahead. I, you have a couple of guys in this game. That's right. Both, both big East guys. <laughs> <laughs> Jefferson. Pretty. Right. And the rebound to Collison. Now send that down with two hands. Come on, that should have been a power dunk. Now Watson. And it'll be a block. Looked like Watson was caught in between. Do I lob it for Wilcox or take it myself? But well, I thought the angle, it would have been a difficult pass for him. And the key is, is was there a defender in the way? See, right now, he had to make up his mind. You could see Jefferson coming down in there. And now, it would have had to been a perfect pass on the money. Seattle down by 12 as Watson goes to the line. A guy who started his NBA career with Seattle and did a couple of other stops, including playing for QB in Memphis. Now back with the Sonics. 
Uh, one of the big stories up here, of course, Hubie, is how long are the Sonics going to be here? Is this their last year? Is Clay Bennett, their owner, going to take them to Oklahoma City? He is fouled for relocation. And right now, it appears the, the two sides are at a standstill, to put it mildly. And this could be the last year of what has been a, a great NBA city over the last 41 years. Yeah, but there's a big question mark there because the city is suing them to hold them to the three years remaining of the contract. So, unfortunately for us, we are not privy to all of the laws that are either broken or not being, you know, amended to. But right. the big key right now is who's going to win when it goes to court. Watson with a long jumper. Some great players have played in this uniform. Well, you know, when you talk about the great ones here, uh, down through the years, they retired some numbers. Freddie Brown, Gus Williams, Jack Sigma, Spencer Haywood, Nate McMillan, and in that... You know, you had uh, uh, Dennis Johnson, you had Johnny Johnson, you had Paul Silas. I mean, we're talking about a cast of guys, especially in the late 70s and the 80s, but this was a dangerous franchise. <laughs> he won the NBA championship in 1979. There are the retired numbers. You were talking uh, earlier before the game about being a visiting coach and the way road trips used to be up here. Three games in three nights on a West Coast swing? In the old days in the 70s and in the early 80s, you would come out on the road and you would play, you would get a, a Seattle on the first night with a three-hour change difference, all right, in time, or you would catch them on that third night, right, he said, and they would always be off on Saturday night when you would come in playing that third day. The Eastern teams definitely did not love that scheduling. Well, it remains to be seen if uh, Seattle is going to stay here or move at the end of this season or beyond that to Oklahoma City or elsewhere as Jefferson has another drive to the bucket. He's got 17. And they get 19 now for Richard Jefferson, the high score in the game. We are seeing a different Richard Jefferson this year. He's playing with a ton of confidence. Now, I know he's been good in the past, but he's not been playing with this type of a confidence level. I think his three-point shooting... And then his foul shooting, two areas that he's up and added on these extra points. Durant fading away, a deep baseline jumper. Again, he, he tries to turn the corner, but there's another defender waiting for him. He's got nothing to do but fade away. He's only had two good opportunities, Dan. The base, the, when he was dribbling, hit that little bank shot from yep. about eight feet, yep. and then the drive. Everything else out on the perimeter has been a frustration, and he's, and he's pushing the shot. Bad percentage shot. At six. 9, 215. How much will an extra 10, 15 pounds of muscle help? Yeah, well, well, we all know that hopefully his body can take it. Uh, George Gervin, you know, for all those years, never really added a lot of weight. But you're hoping that what he will do is he'll get upper body strength and then also from the hips down that you'll be able to post him so that he will not be knocked off the post. Because playing two guards... He's, he's getting a lot of size advantage, but everything is outside, so there is no size advantage. At Texas, he played anywhere from one through five, but he could see over 95% of the guys who were defending. Well, also, when you get drafted that high, if you come into this leg, uh, you're not playing against chopped liver. You're yeah. playing against guys <laughs> with big egos, and they are not going to have you, a rookie, do a number on them. Mm -hmm. And there have been some early lessons to be learned by Kevin Durant. Struggling tonight, as are the Sonics. They right, right, right on the drive, and the follow. See, they have taken advantage of him defensively tonight. When Carter came in in the first half, and then when he moved up to the small forward, Knockbar took advantage of him there. Wilkins a miss, and the rebound right into the chest of Jason Collins. Hit the push. And the set of bounds back to Seattle. If I'm coaching in this game right now at halftime, I'm not happy with the numbers. Points in the paint were a minus 10 if I'm Seattle. Yeah, second chance points were a minus 3. But more important, we're a fast-breaking team. Well, then how come the Nets 11 Supersonics two, two two fast-break points in half? And you saw Durant go out of Wally Zerbiak has come back in. Zerbiak had a big game a couple of weeks ago, 32 against Sacramento. Foul before the bucket. Well, Wally Serbiak has improved the score in this league. I mean, when he was at Minnesota, he really put up big numbers. When he went to Boston, depending upon whether he got starting time. Now here, he's not getting starting time because they play Wilkins, 
they play Wilcox, they, and then maybe they play Kurt Thomas or a Collison. So where does he play? Yeah. Because Durant is going to get his minutes. Yeah. They've got a, a glut on the wing, and they're short in the middle right now because right. the guys they've got are injured, and the guys they have, too, have not really uh, taken them to the next level when they've been in there. As Collison knocks down the jump, really, we talk about... Uh, Swift and Petro, guys who are out right now. The Sonics are still waiting for one of these guys to really grab that job. To me, if Swift come back and give them some good time at the center position, Kurt Thomas gets over the hamstring. You get Rittenauer back. All of a sudden, you added three more quality guys. Malik well, Allen having a quality night into double figures. Unexpected offense from one of the power spots for the Nets tonight. And we have a three-second call. Three-second violation. Now, when you get a three-second call, Dan, in a situation like that, you know, that that's pretty hard to take. Here are the, the three big guys that the Sonics drafted in the first round in 04, 05, 06. A, you're not getting any minutes. Yeah. Zero rebounding. No scoring. Right? And all of them usually are on the injured list. Or they're on the inactive list. Other than that, <laughs> yeah, so well, right now you go back and you question the three the three decisions. Now this guy Swift has got a lot of time. There's no doubt about that. The problem has been can the young man stay healthy because of the fact that he has missed so many games over the years. Still trying to come back from an knee problem, unable to get back on the court right now, and the Sonics feel it. ESPN's presentation of NBA Friday, brought to you by Dodge. Live life to the fullest. Dodge. Grab life. He appreciates that wonderful jab step of Miller's. <laughs> <laughs> well, Hubie appreciates a lot of what Mello can do. Uh, just as uh, Lawrence Frank has appreciated what Richard Jefferson and some of his stars have done here tonight. Uh, Richard Jefferson's having a great ball game. He, with the 19 points, sure. But how about the five assists and most of all, zero turnovers? Wow. John Williams misses the free throw. Jeff Green, Delonte West have come in for Seattle. Jersey not bearing as uh, Serbiak gets two men in there, but then he gets called for the travel. He thought for sure he had a foul call, and now Vince Carter's going to come back in. Well, that's the situation. I mean, we're on the opposite side of the floor because you could not tell. You're going to see the ball fit. You're going to see there's the, well, he just switched physically right there. He could have called it on the initial move. Now, naturally, he got the man up in the air, and he stepped in, and he got in contact. 16 turnovers, Hubie. Yep. And Jefferson is held by Green. Now, Green in the first half did an excellent job. He's got both of the five points, but he had seven rebounds. He's the leading rebounder that we have in this game for the Nets or Seattle. And he's only played about 15 minutes of the 30-plus that have been played in this game so far. Yeah, we're going to see right now they're in it. Seattle coming out. You take the ball out of bounds, New Jersey. We're going to give you a 3-2 zone. Sean Williams, no. And the rebound to Kirk Thomas. Nearly threw it away. Here comes Delonte West. Green, yes! We've been waiting for this. We've been waiting for fast break basketball. They are pushing the basketball, but nothing is happening. Now that it was their seventh point on the break. And then the fact that you get to the foul line. This you're taking advantage of a great athlete right here who can fill the lane. But the key thing is you've got to force turnovers. You're not doing that tonight. Nets only have eight turnovers. You're not getting them to shoot a poor percentage. They're shooting 55%. So you've got to improve the defense here. Greener had his first career double-double in his last game. Has eight points and seven rebounds thus far tonight. Are well, they going to give you a zone again? Thinking here has got to be, the Nets have got to prove that they can continue to score. Williams knocks it out of bounds, Seattle basketball. You change the tempo of the game, that's why you play zone. You change the tempo of the game, uh, you're not allowing them to run their offensive sets. Next thing is you're hiding bad defensive players. Serbiak gets free. And it'll be net ball. Serbiak slaps his hands in disgust. Knew he had a clean look, he's 0 for 4 tonight. 
game got caught in the air, fortunate to get out of that dilemma. Jefferson, left hand, and the follow is there for Malik Allen, who's got a dozen. Uh, he's having a great night because he does not give up on anything. He never assumes that a man is going to make the layup. And the bang inside with Kirk Thomas at the other end. Green backing down the smaller Jefferson. And it'll stay at this end of the floor. And we can hear people behind us hollering. That was a foul. But Green is not really a vocal guy. He's not arguing. Well, Seattle, they're being frustrated. They're being frustrated because they cannot get good looks at the basket. That's number one. They're getting bumped a little bit, but they're getting bumped at both ends of the floor here. So you must adjust for the ump for the way that the game is being up three. Green with a baseline drive and a jam. One of the very few times that the net rotation on the baseline has broken down. They're back within 10, and there's some life back in the building here in Seattle. Carter fading away. Not the best shot that he's had now. Now this unit out there for Seattle is doing a pretty good job. Well, on K. West behind a screen from Kurt Thomas. Timeout, New Jersey. Yeah, good timeout by uh, Frank and the coaching staff for New Jersey. They've got to stop this. They're not doing anything against the zone. And then Seattle is scoring every time. Just watch this. See, no rotation. One of the very few times that that has happened. At this end of the floor, slow. Jason Kidd, slow to get to Dante West. of Sonics still finding their way at the NBA level but all of whom have had success at the collegiate level Jeff Green the Big East player of the year played in a final four a year ago for the Georgetown Hoyas Delonte West along with Orlando's Jameer Nelson part of that great backcourt in St. Joe's a few years back Nick Collison played in a national championship game with Kansas lost to Carmelo and Syracuse and Chris Wilcox two years at Maryland and played in the final four each year now it's, it's a big leap up from college to the NBA, but each of them has tasted success at the collegiate level. Yeah, but unfortunately for them, this is not played at rim level. This is played <laughs> at the foot of, at the top of the yeah. box above the basket. Plus, we all know that the athleticism here, they have never seen this athleticism night in and night out. The big thing for them is, can they establish an inside game Will they take care of the turnover? You cannot be down at the bottom of the lake in turnovers. And then can you shoot a decent percentage? All of these things will take time for them to develop, and then they must become healthy. It's Carter with a good help. He knocks it out of bounds. It was Sean Williams with the dunk at the other end. We had a chance earlier to show Swift out on the side, seven-footer, right. that they picked in the first round. Right. This young guy has got a lot of talent. We know that Kurt Thomas can play center or power forward for you if the hamstring is well and play it defensively as good as most guys in this league. Then you get another point guard back in Ridenauer. So now what you're doing is you're cutting down on your turnovers. You have a better perimeter shooting. And then you have inside play and potential shot blocking. Right now there's no shot blocking. So you just take it to the rim in their face. And the Mets have been doing that all night long. The jumper by Serbiak gets it down to seven. Serbi or Collison rather comes over to help and bothered Nakbar just enough to affect his shot. Yeah, this team group out here right now has done a very nice job. They're playing good tempo basketball, they're getting good shots at the basket, and they're helping one another defensively. Lob inside, Nick Collison. Hey, Kurt Thomas is a heady player. Yeah, when that ball came to Kurt Thomas, he could have taken that jump shot. He knows how to play. He played with Phoenix last year. What did he do? He looked for the cutter to the rim. The Sonics as close as they've been in a long while, down by five. Richard Jefferson with a game-high 19. Straight up over Jeff Green. Nice. Sean Williams got held. His jersey got tugged. And somebody got called for the foul for the Sonics. Now keep an eye on the ball movement. See, there's nothing there for Zerbe. Tomias has it. He could have forced a shot. Instead, he's looking down inside. Movement without the basketball. And we keep bringing out this point. This club, we have a lot of young players, equal talent, right? no shot blocking, but what they must do is get accustomed to playing with one another. That's something that does not happen until you play for a couple of months, November and December. Sonic zone again. Zone has been good. 
corner, the three for Nakbar. That's all right. You'll live with that. Now, we know Nakbar's a great shooter. But come on. The, the percentages have been in your favor since you've gone into the zone with this group. Zerbiak driving right into the teeth of the defense, draws the foul. Now, see, Wally, Wally has been around. Well, Wally has scored a lot of points in this league. Always a high percentage shooter in Minnesota, high percentage shooter in Boston. So he's taken it in, and he's going to get the call because he's going to force the contact. Zerbiak, in his career, averaging better than 15 points per game. On the NBA calendar on NBA TV tomorrow night, the Hornets at the Clippers at 10.30 Eastern. A doubleheader on TNT Thursday. The Knicks at the Celtics at 8. And the Nuggets and Lakers at 10.30. And a weekend tonight right here on ESPN. The Celtics and Heat early. And then the Lakers are in Utah for the second game. One of two. Oh, it's, it's in the water here tonight. Right? <laughs> Wally Serbiak is an 86% voucher. It's in the water. Oh, thanks. <laughs> and defense now with Kier and other than quiet at times. Kid wide open for three. Vince Carter the assist. Well, Jason Kidd can do that to you. He can make the three. He's been known. He's a very streaky shooter. He's only shooting 28%, but on the night set he's hot. Look out. Vince Carter's come out of the second half with his thumb taped up. Apparently suffered some sort of a thumb injury earlier on in this game. Collison slips inside and scoops it in. Nice play. That was pretty. Very pretty. Because he took his time. He knew the shot clock was down. He gave the up and under fake and then had the presence to knock in that shot. Right. Lobs it up for Boone who misses the jam. Serbia. Kurt Thomas keeps it alive. Another blue-collar play by Thomas out there. The good thing here is step back. You got 16, 15 seconds. Make sure you get a good look. West getting a lot of minutes at the point here in the third quarter. Nice ball set. But he missed the shot. Look out here now. That's up plenty of time. Kid probing the defense. Left hand, no. Rebound, Thomas. And that's all here in the third. So Seattle got it down to five. New Jersey's got it back up to eight with 12 minutes to go here at Key Arena in Seattle. The Nets try to make it two consecutive road wins. They're up 76-68 on the Sonics. Don't go away. Phoenix Suns. That's well, always entertaining for fans, no doubt about that, to see them get up and down the field like the Suns get up and down the court. Kevin Durant doing more down than up here tonight on the bench to start the fourth quarter. The Sonics are down by eight. It has been a rough night for Kevin Durant. Six points, two of seven from the floor, and struggling defensively. We've got a hold inside. They had him, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Wally Serbiak just posted in front of the rim. It was an excellent play. Uh, they ran a movement, posted Serbiak. He had Knockbar on him. Knockbar was pinned, so he's trying to fight up over the top. I'm surprised that Green did not throw him the yeah. ball because Serbiak could have caught it and laid it up with his left hand. Now Serbiak trying to get back down into the post. Doesn't have quite the position this time. Shot clock at four. Delonte West from beyond the arc. Rebound, Kid. Kid going right by Green, up and under, and wave it off. Basket interference. Good call, excellent call. Uh, Jason Kid ends up with a bad angle on that shot. Bad angle. Just watch this. He wanted the foul, and he should have gotten a foul. Number one, there was a hand on his shoulder, and he got hit. But Boone definitely touches the ball over the cylinder. New Jersey is led by as many as 13. They're up eight early in the fourth. Serbia having an off night shooting the basketball. Yeah, they need Wally to hit that one. He's one for seven. He's struggling a little bit. But he's not going to stop shooting because all shooters are looking for that quick streak. Not far. And a rebound to Green. Jimmy! 
Now Serbiak driving, leans that shoulder in and draws the foul. Do you think that Serbiak feels he has an advantage? <laughs> I, mean, it's just, I mean, this is amazing. I, I mean, he was open twice in the post. They missed him down inside. But as soon as he's getting the basketball, he's going hard to the rim. And we all know that when you're struggling from outside, your shot is not going down. Take the ball to the basket. Get fouled. Get to the free throw line. Make a couple of layups or get some foul shot attempts and score from there. And you talked about he's one of the veteran guys, one of the older guys on this team, and you can see that in the way he's playing. He's being more assertive than some of the younger guys are in the plays he's making at the offensive end. Well, he listen, he's a wise veteran. He has scored. He's been in many a playoff game, and he has scored big in the playoff game. Another miss, though. Green, another rebound. Whoa, he and he did. It'll be a jump ball between Jeff Green and Jason Kidd in just a few words. Exchange between the two. What I like about Green's game tonight is he has nine rebounds. He's leading both teams in rebounding tonight. And we'll jump it off with Kidd. Damian Wilkins and Kidd having a conversation right now. Everybody trying to stay calm. Into the game at Alpha Seattle. I get the feeling the Sonics, the whole second half, either they've been on the verge of a run, on the verge of a breakthrough, but they haven't hit that one outside shot that makes a seven point game a four point game. Then they have not been able to make the easy play. Like right there, you win the jump yeah. and you don't come up with the basketball. Green right now defending Jason Kidd. West is on Richard Jefferson. We've got some odd assignments right now. The defensive end of the floor for the Sonics. Oh, see, that was smart. Go in and force the double team. Right. And it's Seattle basketball. Again, they've got a chance to cut into the deficit. Jeff Green now has 11 rebounds in this game. West. Wilcox. Rebound Green. Good defense that time by Malik Allen. It crosses over on West. And it's foul. Sometimes Jason Kidd can blow you to sleep yeah. defensively. He's going to the basket and you're saying, well, he's not going all the way. I know he's going to pass the ball out to a wide open guy for a three point shot. But that time he was going yeah. to score. And at 34, he's still got that extra gear he can get into and get by guys who appear to be quicker than him. You saw the numbers that he's got tonight. That is his 10th point, 6 assists, 5 rebounds, has 3 triple doubles this year, 90 in his career, third most all time. And he's averaging a career high in rebounds so far this young season. He had almost 9 rebounds per game. Well, every year he leads all guards in rebounds. Every year. A travel on green. They've been quick tonight. They've been really quick on the whistle if you're going to slide that pivot. If that ball is not out of your hand, that they are getting it right, and, and it's the correct ball. Vince Carter came off the bench and really got the Nets going in the first quarter. Had nine points in the first, two in the second. None since. Nice. Stolen by West. we got to get something here. Wilkins. And they do. That was a beautiful play by West. An excellent decision. And you love to see your big guys run the lane that hard. Wilkins fighting around the screen. Carter elevates and scoops it in. That's what you get when he comes back. Yep. Now that was beautiful. I mean, he made that look so simple. He, he handled the, ba the basketball like it was a baseball, and it was so easy to control. A nine-point lead for the Nets. Fading away, Delonte West cuts it to seven. Right? He's feeling it. You can see it. His team has played, you know, with a lot of passion. That second unit, he did well. Now P.J.'s back with his starting. He's leaving him out on the floor. And Green, they both deserve to be out here. Jefferson posting up on Durant. Offensive foul. Yeah, good call. Jefferson better be watching out right here now. That was a very good call. 
He's going to argue it as we go to a timeout. Well, now, Vince Carter went over an eye the defense. Oh, that was beautiful. Yeah, just the way that he controlled that ball as a pickup. Now, this is a nice play. He took it down in. He had no place to go. He had the presence of mind to hit that short fadeaway. The fish better than the Sonics have handled the basketball at times here tonight. Turnovers a big reason why Seattle is trailing New Jersey by seven here in the fourth quarter. Time now for our serious satellite radio game track, Yubi. Well, you can see the big three are having a great night tonight. We're talking Carter, Kidd, and Jefferson. 43 points, 11 rebounds, and how about 16 of the net 17 assists? So it has been outstanding. Yeah, Kevin Durant, on the other hand, is struggling. Just six points. On the bench more often tonight than he normally has. He has had trouble at both ends of the floor, especially at the defensive end with the likes of Jefferson and Carter. Well, they've been all over him. They're not allowing the dribble of basketball. The double teams have been quick. Wilcox now with the rebound of Carter. Wilcox, they're not allowing him to get a good look at the basket. Tonight he only has 10 points and three rebounds. And we're talking about a guy who's having a terrific season for Seattle. Jefferson curls into the lane, left-handed layup. Oh, that was a beautiful staggered screen down on the baseline on the right side of the floor. The Nets now, they have, they're accustomed to being in this type of a game with eight minutes on the clock. Durant gets a clean look tonight, but he misses the three. One of his few clean looks at the basket all night. Well, let's see if this first unit for Seattle can play some defense, as well as their second unit did to get them back in the game. Same play again. This time Jefferson doesn't get the feed. Carter for three. And Green over Boone for a strong rebound. Well, that's his 12th. The young man is playing great basketball. West misses the runner. Green there with another rebound and a putback. That's what you love to see. You love to see a player never assuming a guy is going to make an uncontested layup. That was an easy shot that West blew. But... Thank goodness, Green is right there. Up to 12 points and 13 rebounds now for the rookie out of Georgetown. Jefferson driving by Durant. We'll go to the line. You know that that's the weak spot. And I like the strategy by the Nets. They are saying, we're going to Jefferson off of the staggered screens. And even if he doesn't have the clear opening, let him take him off the dribble to the basket. Carter wore him out in the first half, and now Jefferson is doing the same thing in the second half. Approaching his average, which is 24 and a half. Jefferson with 21 right now. And that started the year 4 and 1, lost 6 in a row, 5 of them with Vince Carter's sideline. One at Portland Wednesday, they're 5 and 7. Seattle got out of the gate 0 and 8. Won two on the road, Miami and Atlanta, but were blown out in their last two games of their road trip. Have not played since Monday. We have to look inside now. But Green has Carter on the post. Whoa! Reverse jam! You love that. You have to see the mismatch. The Nets are switching on down screening. So you can get an advantage on the post-up, but you must get the man the ball. And as P.J. Colesimo told us, is he a three, is he a four? Sometimes they'll have a matchup problem at one end of the floor, but he'll give a guy a problem at the other end of the floor, and the Nets just return the favor to Green. Now just keep an eye on it. You got the mismatch. See, I'm taking it strong, but I'm coming up on the other side of the basket. That negated any potential shot block. But at the other end, Jefferson just used superior quickness to get by Green. And complete the three-point play. Jefferson's got the last seven points tonight for the Nets. Durant driving on Carter. Got some help from Jefferson. And it's another turnover. Offensive foul on Durant. There was a situation where Durant gets double teamed. See, he's not reading the double team well at all. When the double team comes, you've got to pull up because you're forcing the action and you're not getting good luck. Pass the basketball out of the double team. 
of all the things you think he would be used to at this level, it is a double team because it happened in college, it happened in high school. Yeah, but here you're doing it with quickness and then also size. Green foul. But you play at the high school level and college level, Dan. You, you, because you're so tall and with long arms, you can just elevate up over the top of the double dip. You cannot do that at this level. Yeah, I'll be all over it. Um, I've been watching the last few. I'll admit I'm kind of jumped on the bandwagon late. I've uh, been busy. I haven't seen a lot of games, but definitely fun to watch, and it's, it's a great thing for the university to have the football team playing like they are. Now we're trying to get Collison to give us a little rock chalk Jayhawk, but he declined before the game. He's got a big weekend ahead of him. We've got uh, Kansas and Missouri playing football tomorrow night on ABC, and then Kansas hosting Richard Jefferson's Arizona Wildcats in basketball Sunday night at 8 on ESPN. Good effort there, and who else but Kurt Thomas? He'll take the jumper and knock it down. Yeah, he can do that. He's always been able to face the basket 15 to 18 feet, knock down that shot. Second field goal tonight for Thomas. Again, Seattle makes a little move, but then the Nets respond. Durant defending Antoine Wright, who shakes him on the baseline and loses it out of bounds. Now, that was excellent coverage out of the zone. They did a good job. In the back, Kurt Thomas was talking. That was excellent communication. West! Down to five. Now you got to be careful here. This is what we talked about. They play well. They play in peaks and valleys. All young teams do that, especially at home. But when they get hot, got, this is a dangerous time right now for the Nets. West with a dozen off the Seattle bench. Shot clock at nine, nearly stolen. Jefferson's got it back. Just don't foul. Deep three. And the rebounder Durant almost had it taken away by Kidd, sneaking in from behind. Thomas. Yeah, good fake. West. It's a two, a long two that makes it a three-point game. Yeah, that's the headiness of a veteran player. He, he, Kurt Thomas could have forced that jump shot, but Delonte West played it well coming off, giving it to him, and then giving it back and getting it back, and you end up with a better shot. So keep it up. Delonte West, you know he's on fire right now. you got to get up, close him out, and overplay the hand. Right there. See, too late. You're down too late. The young man is on fire. And Robert, here in Seattle, the Sonics down only three in what has turned into a terrific game here in the fourth quarter. Dan Schulman and Hubie Brown back with you. And, and the Sonics try to win their first home game of the season. The Nets try to win two in a row on the road. The Seattle bench has been a big story. Uh, they've been big. They brought them back in the second half. And also in the first set, they got it back to a game. Dante West with the 14 points. And then also Green with the 14 and the 13 rebounds. And then you add, in a short period of 13 minutes, Thomas has come in with five points and five rebounds and three assists. Playing with a strained hamstring that is limiting his minutes. Jason Kidd will quiet the crowd. Uh, see, that that's a big mistake. You just cannot leave your feet to go for a shot block. The big thing there is, is the play position basketball and do not allow Jason Kidd to get an open look. Kidd is 5 of 6 from the floor. West turns it over and Thomas grabs the jersey of Antoine Wright. Smart play. See, that's a veteran. He's not going to allow you to go out 4 on 1. That would have been an easy layup for the Nets. Instead, he fouls in the backcourt. You have to take the ball out on the side. Uh, good defense. At the uh, one end of the floor, you know, by the Nets. Give them a lot of credit. Now they've got to buckle up on you. 20 turnovers committed by Seattle. They came into the game over 18, the most in the league. The Nets were second. Get posted. Carter. And he threw it away. Now, that, that was a big mistake over in the corner by Antoine Wright. Wright was open. When Carter made his move, Wright moved out to the top of the circle on the wing. And instead of staying there, because that's where Carter thought that he would be. West uses the screen by Thomas to rebound to Jefferson. No hurry here. No hurry. 
What do you tell? It's not who starts, who finishes, and three bench guys are in the game here at crunch time for the Sonics. Out of bounds to Seattle. Yeah, I like what P.J. Colissimo is doing with this young team. He's rewarding these people because they've all done an outstanding job for him off the bench. I think Delonte West has played every minute of the fourth quarter here at the point. And Kurt Thomas is getting minutes. Jeff Green, who didn't start, is getting minutes, and he's got a double-double. you got to make something happen here. See? They're just random moving around. That will not get it done. That'll get it done, though. It's been difficult for him to get to the bed. That's only the second time tonight that the Nets have fallen apart on their rotation on the baseline. Vince Carter backing down Green. Draws the foul. An established player like Vince Carter going down inside in that situation. You must play him perfectly without any kind of body contact because he is going to get the call in that situation. Now, Durant, just keep an eye on him. Watch to the left of the screen. See, there is no one there. You've got to take the charge in that situation. Can't go for the shot block. Just beat him to the spot. The foul on Jeff Green, his fifth. Carter in the second game back from the ankle injury. 14 off the bench. The Nets led by as many as 13 and have led virtually the entire night. Now, P.J. Colosimo has a, a, a legitimate complaint. You know, it comes down to how much contact was there. On our replay, there was not a lot. But all night long, Tiki Tack has gotten you to the foul line. They've called it close tonight. A five-point lead for the Nets. Seattle ball. Durant for three. Well, if you're going to make them, make them at showtime. <laughs> A little pound of the chest, some clapping, and everybody on their feet here at Key Arena. Carter inside the arc. Seattle ball with a chance to tie or take the lead. The last tie was at 30-30. Plenty of time here. Plenty of time. West. Thomas has it in the press 24. Yeah, that's great basketball. That take your time. Uh, you're playing pick and roll basketball and reading the defense. Well, Thomas has had some big plays for the Sonics tonight. Durant to tie it. Wide left. New Jersey ball. Right now, this has been a frustrating three to four minutes for the Nets. They're not running their offense. They're getting hurried shot attempts. Two-point lead for the Nets, a minute 22 to go. Back here in Seattle, the Sonics trying to mount a furious rally here with the closing moments. They're back within two. And Kevin Durant, he may be young and he may not be shooting that well, Hubie, but he's shown he's not afraid to take the big shot down the stretch. Now, that was an excellent screen by Thomas. He picked the man off defensively, and then it was up to Durant to knock in the shot. What I like about him is he's not afraid. He's struggling, getting off shot attempts tonight. He's been limited. He's not getting his 15 to 18 shots. But he stayed within what they were doing. And now that things are opening up, he's making the big shot. Then a Seattle foul puts the Nets on the line. The Nets have one to give. I like the timeout by the Nets. This is a, a pressure playoff team, and they've got to get their high percentage basketball in operation here. Right. Going at Durant. Up and in for Antoine Wright. Now that was a difficult, difficult shot. He, he shot that up over the top of two defenders. And this is the small lineup for New Jersey with four perimeter guys and Josh Boone. And they spread the floor and make things happen. Now just keep an eye on this drive. You're going to see two white shirts right there. See, now that was difficult, but he played the glass. Two teams in need of a win. The Nets are 5-7, and seven, but coming off a win in Portland on a Wednesday, Seattle, their very young team struggling early this season, just 2-10, a four-point lead for the Nets. 
with just over a minute to go. It is Seattle basketball right now. We've seen a couple of recent buckets from Kevin Durant. We've seen Delonte West become somewhat of a go-to guy in recent minutes. If you're P.J. Carlissimo, Hubie, what are you drawing up right now? Well, they've been playing pick and roll at the top, you know, using Thomas, setting the screens for Delonte West, and then screening down on the opposite side for Durant. So they have something going where you, you cannot play the screen and pop or the screen and roll by traffic because they are having movement on the opposite side of the floor that you must defend. Jason Collins in for Josh Boone in the middle for New Jersey. West right at him. What a drive by Delonte West. He has been able to get to his left hand time and time again. But if you think about it, I, in this league, we have 450 players. We do not have 50 guys who are left-handed. So night in and night out, you play guys who are right-handed. He's getting to where he wants to go easily. The foul on Collins, his fifth. First free throw of the night. One-point game. So New Jersey led by as many as 13 at a couple of stages in this game. Give this young Seattle team credit for fighting back. Well, we said earlier tonight that they've played many a close game. Now they're all in four in the building, but they play quality teams. So you knew that they would play 48 minutes. They play in peaks and valleys because they're young. But since Kurt Thomas has come on the floor, yeah. then added to West as well as Green, the second unit has been spectacular. Give them a ton of credit because for the first time tonight, they've defended at the other <laughs> end of the floor. With a capital D. That's right. Now, but tell us, as a coach, moral victories are nice, but the W's are what really oh, matter. Now, you're, so. you're absolutely right. That's why I keep saying, look, I've been in the situation with young teams in Atlanta and in Memphis. I, when you have the youngest team or the second youngest team, what the thing is is they need confidence. They need to win a game like this to get the confidence factor. But you know... That's why I said earlier, at least three times here tonight, when they get swift yes. and they get a healthy time and they get ridden out of back, this is going to be a very tough team yeah. for any team to beat here in Seattle. Yeah. Because you can hear the people. Yeah. They love the effort. They may not get a new building. They may not keep the team. But there are about 16,000 people here tonight who love their Sonics. It has been a 41-year run for Seattle in this city. First year for P.J. Colissimo as the head coach. And a spirited comeback in the second half by the Sonics tonight. But now, as Shuby said, once again, they need to defend. They need to get a stop. Big thing right now is nothing foolish, okay? We, we know that you have uh, things in your favor. There are plenty of timeouts for both teams right here. Jefferson. Great move. What a night for Richard Jefferson. 28. Now, now that that was a great play because they went to Jefferson, and you know that in that other huddle, they were not thinking Jefferson. Now, just keep now, Watch how they clear out. Now, there it is. There's the up and under, and he comes right back as he takes his right hand into your face. Just watch it. Now he's going to come down, and it is your fake. He held on to that pivot foot. You're allowed to pick up the pivot foot if you pass or shoot. A terrific move by a young man who's having an outstanding season this year. Averaging 24 and a half through the first 12 games of the year at 28 tonight. A huge bucket for the Nets. Nine points in the fourth quarter for Richard Jefferson. Now still plenty of time, 48 seconds. No need to force a three, right? That's exactly right. Uh, well, three in an NBA game when you can move the ball like him, you know, all the way <laughs> three quarters of the court. Now right now the big thing is, is you want to come out of this timeout and run a play that you have confidence in so that you get a high percentage look. Just don't force anything. Just get a good look at the best. Wilkins to inbound. Boone in for Collins for the Nets. You always tell the young players, when in doubt, drive the ball to the basket. Here's that high screen again. But a switch got Boone on West. Through the hands of Green. Kids got it. And Thomas with a foul. 
Now that is the first time tonight that Delante West has read the screen incorrectly because Thomas kind of rolled. He did not stay high. Every other time he's been staying high and receiving the pass back for either the shot or an assist to another player. And maybe it's fitting if something is to prevent the Sonics from winning this game. It's a turnover. They're 21st of the night. Jason Kidd now with a 14. Get a, you get a missed foul shot right now. You must get this rebound if you're Seattle. And they do. Good. And call a timeout, a 20-second timeout. A two-possession game with 35 seconds to go. This is all about percentage basketball now. With 34.8 seconds on the clock, it is imperative that you score quick. And the thing is now is do not force a three. Because if you force a three and miss, you'll foul, and the game will immediately go from four to either five or to six. The key thing for you right now is to get the high percentage up but get a quick move. Most teams have a play that you can score within two to five seconds, but it's usually going to the basket or something down below the foul line area. And for Lawrence Frank, he's gone a long stretch in this game, QB, with a small lineup, and he's gotten even smaller right now as Knockbar's coming in for Boone, along with Carter, Wright, Kidd, and Jefferson, so uh, nobody over 6'9", and the second biggest guy on the floor is Richard Jefferson. Uh, well, he's going to play defensively. He wants the matchup. He knows that Jefferson can play Kurt Thomas. See, so he knows he's, he, he's not... What he's trying to do now is match up with their quickness. And then if we get the ball, you foul us, I've got my good foul yeah. shooters in the game. Seattle down four with the ball. Get it in. Durant with Kidd on him now. Kidd got a hand in there, but is called for the foul. Good basketball. See, right now, you look at the clock, 31 seconds. You know that even if the Nets run the clock, you're going to have plenty of time. This is just smart basketball here. I know. I give Jason Kidd a lot of credit. He's not going to let him get a three-point play. You always tell your guys, if you're going to foul, foul him from the elbow out to the hand. Ooh, a big miss for a guy who came into the game at 84% as Boone replaces Knockbar. A tough night in many respects for Kevin Durant. He had a couple of big shots here earlier in this quarter, but overall it's been a struggle. All right, now you're back to one possession. The key now, no silly fouls. The Nets have got to execute perfectly and get something. And the big thing is the open shot. You don't get the open shot. You want to make sure that you're going to the basket with a potential three-point play or a foul. But the key for Seattle, no fouling in that situation. Both teams are now out of timeouts as Lawrence Frank looks to diagram something with 22.6 seconds to play. You know you're going to get the ball back if you're P.J. Carlissimo. The key is to defend strong, get the Nets to shoot, they miss, you get the rebound, you call a timeout. All right, that's, that's your deal. At the other end, you know now that Lawrence Frank wants something going strong. The NBA season continues next Friday night with a doubleheader here on ESPN at 8 Eastern. It's Garnett, Pierce, Allen, and the rest of the Celtics down into Miami against Wayne Wade, Shaquille O'Neal, and the Heat. And then at 10.30 Eastern, Hubie and I will be in Salt Lake City as Kobe Bryant and the Lakers come calling on Darren Williams and the Utah Jazz. NBA Friday on ESPN. Coverage begins at 7.30 Eastern with Kia NBA Shootaround. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Now the Nets have plenty of time, 16 seconds. Seattle must get the rebound if they miss the shot. You're going to have a six-second difference. And remember, no timeouts. Kid will milk the clock for a few seconds. Yeah, just watch for the high screen or if they allow Jason to go one-on-one. -on -one. Jefferson, he's yeah. been the go-to guy. The floater, no! Seattle ball! No timeout. They're going for it. And West is fouled. Carter would not let him get the three off. Smart play. Just a 
smart play. You know that the Nets covered that in the last timeout. Now, if they are not going to call timeout, they're going to rush the ball on us. Uh, you make the foul. All right, now what you have to do in the situation is, you know, you're looking at two seconds. You're forcing them to make the first foul shot. A lot of pressure on that, okay? And it looks like uh, Vince Carter is maybe asking for himself or somebody else to come out, get some big guys in there to rebound the basketball. Well, you're right about yeah. that because every team should have a play situation. Where are you going to miss the shot? All right, now if you don't have the play, you've got to use communication yeah. here, all right, so that he knows which side to make. But there's a lot of pressure on this first shot. There's a lot more pressure. Yes. <laughs> because not only do you have to miss it, you have to get the rebound and kick it out and make a three. Yep. So we're talking about a little bit of a miracle here. And a loose ball foul going against Seattle as Jefferson got sandwiched. Now, that was an easy call. Yeah. Uh, uh, we know that uh, all right, the ball was definitely, it hit the rim, and as the ball came out, Dante West comes down and there's a collision. And it was an easy call. You can see the foul right there. Could have been he, West or Green. That's right. Yep. Now, the Nets executed perfectly in this last minute of play. Uh, they maximized their timeouts. They knew what they were doing. They went to the key people. And even when they had adversity by not scoring, they were able to do something smart defensively at the other end of the floor. And Jefferson will put it away. The Nets will make it two consecutive road wins, winning at Portland Wednesday. On their way to a win here tonight, heading down to Los Angeles to take on the Lakers Sunday night, and the Sonics will remain winless in their home arena. When you take over a bad situation, this team was losing games all right, by over 11 points a game. So the big thing right now is, is you've got to get it down to where the differential is like 0-0. Zero, zero. And that is going to be hard work from now to the end of the season. The Sonics showing signs of progress, but they follow Jason Kidd in the New Jersey Nets tonight. 98-93, to Richard Jefferson with a game-high 30 tonight for New Jersey. For Hubie Brown and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Dan Schulman saying so long from Seattle. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. The Nets over the Sonics here at Key Arena. Sports Center is coming up next.